Hello everyone, it's uh, Julie Newmark here, the coordinator for English 2210. Because we're not meeting in person this year, but are only having um, a drop-in convocation after the um, convocation for all of core writing, I'm recording this video as I just walk through these slides, which I'll also share with you. So in this video, I'm going to quickly go through the slows, and you can go through them more slowly at your own pace when you get the slideshow. I'm going to tell you some important updates about the portfolio um, website requirements. Um, I'm going to review with you the pool of assignments from which you all can choose to have your students do. We're going to look at a sample prompt for the reflective memo and portfolio. I'm going to talk about the textbook discuss um, outcomes reflections and project reflections, as well as statements of goals and choices. I'm going to show a sample scaffolded sequence. I'm going to discuss the assessment, and then we'll conclude. So quickly, here are the slows in their full form. Many of you who've taught 2210 before are very familiar with this. This is the nine slows as developed for instructors. So you can read this slide. Um, on your own time and this will explain to you the logic behind these as they come from the Society for Technical Communication as adapted for our use in an educational context. Now here are the slows as they exist in my syllabus and I hope in all of your syllabi. This has been rewritten so that the language is more appropriate to students. This can be pasted into your syllabi just as it is. I've talked in prior convocations about how our outcomes align with the state higher education department's required outcomes for the technical writing class. Um, you're probably not interested in this, but the objective is that our uh, core curriculum technical writing classes outcomes have to align with the outcomes of the same class across all state universities. And the reason for that is so that if a student takes technical writing at New Mexico State or at Highlands um, or at UNM, they all have to be transferable across institutions. Okay, so this is important news for you, those of you who've taught the class before and those of you who have inherited a class from someone else. Um, I know I've shared my um, online course build out with folks who've wanted it. And I believe it's the second week, I don't have it in front of me, there is an item that relates to having your students follow a tutorial video and an instruction sheet for creating their Google site for their portfolio. Now the class at Google Sites is going dark in November. And as you've experienced, if you've taught this class before, students like to use whatever they're familiar with to build their portfolio, and I'm typically fine with that. My students have used Wix, Weebly, WordPress, new Google Sites, various things to create beautiful uh, website portfolios. So, I need you to all go in and take out that content regarding the uh, Google Sites portfolio template. Just take it out, take out anything that refers to that, and I encourage you to replace it with an information sheet that says here are my or your instructions for what you must have in your portfolio. You must have these menu items. Of course, there has to be an area for all the slows for all the major projects, a landing page where they have their final reflection, and anything else that you require them to have. Um, if you have time, you can create your own walkthrough. Um, I suggest that if you have previous students who did a beautiful job on the portfolio, you might reach out to them and see if they'll give you permission to share their site with your current students. That's always been super helpful for my students. Okay, so our annual assessment, for the last several years, we have had uh, our assessment team look at how students are performing on slows two and nine, project analysis and production and delivery. My intention was to change this for the next cycle of three years, but with everything that's been going on with coronavirus and core writing and attending to all of the upheaval, we're not going to do that this year. We're just going to stick with slows two and nine. So you just need to be sure that when your students are writing their final reflection in their portfolio that they are emphasizing their work and providing examples of their proficiency in these two slows. Okay, so here are some things that are mandatory for all sections. A cumulative portfolio that is prefaced by a reflective memorandum. So there are model prompts for all of these things. Um, you might add quizzes into your course, you might, uh, and as I say here, Shanae created several years ago a quiz bank, which she shared with me and many of the other instructors, so if you would like that, just write to me 
Um, Shanae gave me permission before to share it with everybody. So um, you do need to go in and look at all the quizzes and make sure they pertain to what you're teaching, but it's a great starting point. Now, what I show on the screen is how the point breakdown works in my class. You will change this to suit what you emphasize in your class. Um, this particular table shown here is when I teach a face-to-face -face community engaged learning activity is project two. I'm teaching um, remote uh, synchronous this semester, so I will not be doing the community engaged activity. So this will change somewhat in my course. You need to make sure that your portfolio is worth at least a third of the grade. Okay, so this is the prompt, and I know you can't read it in this video, so I hope you'll go back and either look at the prompt itself or look at this slideshow and zoom in on this. But you'll see here that this is a quite dense um, document that explains everything that students need to do in their portfolio. And you see some arrows here, arrows one and two. And as I explain here, Arrow one concerns the memorandum, which is composed at the end of the term. This is a part of 2210 that requires you as an instructor to coach your students quite assiduously so that they know what is expected in this genre, this reflective memorandum. Now the second arrow on the previous page is something that I've created in my own courses and you do not have to do this, but I created an opportunity in um, week 14 for students to do a comprehensive revision of one major assignment and they have to do a video walkthrough of their revision. This was something that I added two years ago to make sure students were doing a comprehensive revision and it's worked really well. So you have to include all of the basic information in the portfolio prompt as shown on the previous slide, but you can add to it as I have done as shown in arrow two. Okay, here's our textbook. I don't need to say much about this, but you need to make sure that Red Shelf is enabled in your Learn, and then the textbook will show up for your students. Um, let me know if you have any trouble enabling Red Shelf, and I will send you the instructions. So reflection, again, is something that we stress throughout 2210. Um, we expect you to do it from the get-go. Each major assignment um, has a project reflection that goes with it. Um, if you're using a course that follows closely the ECOMP version of 2210, you'll understand that there's there are questions already built into the assignments that students have to answer to go with those project reflections. Then at the end of the course, they have to do their course reflection, which is this multi-page memorandum. In addition to that, students have to reflect on all nine slows. So I have my students reflect on three for project one, the next three for project two, and the final three for project three. Then they've hit them all. They can take all of that content um, in a sort of aggregated fashion with revision and use that as the basis on which to build for their final reflection. So I'm gonna try to quickly talk about what I do for the professional correspondence um, content. So I mentioned earlier in this video that you can do this with an annotated job ad or um, a, application letter and a resume, but of course a resume is also part of the course later. But this is sort of a different version, which is a complaint and response letter with social media component. Now this I created several years ago to deal um, in a very explicit fashion with uh, racially problematic communications that are distributed in our, in our country um, by large corporations. I historically have used um, content surrounding the murals in Zimmerman Library or the UNM SEAL um, or the Nextdoor app or a uh, racially offensive corn pops box. And I have students write a complaint letter in the persona of somebody who was um, offended by the content. They write a letter to the company and then they take on the persona of the company and they write a response and then they have to create a social media series that is a back and forth between the consumer and the company, and they all submit this in a complete packet. If you'd like to see what this looks like, I'm happy to share with you examples. This semester, I'm going to change the examples to resonate more closely with what has been happening in our country over the last several months to provide an opportunity to put a finer point on some of these issues for my students about which they can write complaint and response letters and try to occupy their those personae in a very professional way in the different approaches to writing letters, whether from the perspective of a consumer 
or a corporation, and then understanding the social media parameters for engaging with these issues. This is the assignment as it was written before. As I said, one of the options was Kellogg's Corn Pops, you can see in the middle of the screen, or the Zimmerman Library um, murals. And I'm going to be changing the examples and the bullet points um, as shown on the middle page of the assignment. And as I say, this assignment intends to take on one of our slows that concerns ethics and racial justice directly, rather than sort of expecting us to, in some total in the class, take it on, this takes it on directly. Okay, so this assignment takes on these slows, as I said explicitly, the project analysis slow, where students are supposed to think about how to compose communications for specific global, diverse, and multicultural audiences, and this assignment gives them practice thinking about that. Okay, so the assessment, all you need to know is that this fall, um, I will be writing to you, or Susan McAllister will be writing to you um, about submitting a sample student portfolio for the assessment. Um, and finally, I want to say a few things in closing. I guess I didn't successfully change the slide um, to say my fall 2020 office hours, which we are calling um, drop-in hours. I need everybody to refer to these as drop-in hours because Associate Provost Pamela Cheek is encouraging us to call them that since they will be all online. Um, I don't know what mine are yet, but when I do, I'll let you know. And I'm available a lot by video chat and I'm happy to meet with you. I want you to really think about what we talked about in the general convocation about being sensitive and flexible when it comes to participation and attendance in these remote versions of our classes in these coronavirus times. Um, so I'm not going to repeat that here because it was covered in the general convocation, but I want you to think about that when you're doing final design um, to launch your 2210 class. And finally, if you would remind your students about our technical and professional communication minor and certificate, that would be great. I'm happy to virtually visit any of your classes and share content about the minor and certificate with your students. It's been a great path for many of our students in the past, and I'm hoping that that continues. Thanks a lot, and um, I'm really excited to work with all of you this semester.